SpaceX heads to court to defend its Starship program, Dragon delivers people to the space station, Starlink takes the bus, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Just minutes after last Friday's episode aired, SpaceX posted a clip of one of their Raptor engines at the McGregor site, test firing into one of their new splash pad pieces for Starship's refurbished launch pad, which of course is being implemented into the foundation of the orbital launch mount to prevent the booster's 33 Raptor engines from boring another pit into the Earth's crust, sending debris in every direction across expanses of surrounding wildlife refuge, which has proven to be easily doable otherwise, even more so since the Raptor design continues to improve and become more powerful. Elon tweeted last week that Raptor 3 has reached 350 bar chamber pressure, and this week that the improved output from the engines will enable about 6,000 tons of rocket and cargo to be lifted off the pad. So it's important that SpaceX fortify Stage 0 before the next launch, but not just to keep their stand from falling over. Various environmental activists are clawing at the chance to ground Starship because of their recent test flight. It was reported by CNBC on Monday that SpaceX has requested to join the FAA in their defense against a lawsuit brought forth by the tree huggers which is standard in these kind of circumstances since the outcome could affect the company's launch license. The hippies are alleging that the FAA could have done more in their environmental study to prevent Starship from redistributing concrete, fire, and pieces of stainless steel around Boca Chica and offshore in the Gulf. On Saturday morning, Falcon 9 hoisted the Iridium-1 web mission to low Earth orbit from the west coast, obviously, and deployed all spacecraft successfully an hour and 20 minutes later. That's a snub nose MVAC engine right there. The booster, flying for its 11th time, landed on Of Course I Still Love You, bobbing on the Pacific. Then the following day, Axiom Space's second commercial crew mission to the space station took off from the East Coast, carrying two Americans and two Arabians. And lift off Falcon 9. Go Axiom. Copy, one alpha. Together we expand what is possible in low Earth orbit. Ad Astra and Godspeed AX2. This was the first time a Crew Dragon's first stage booster burned back for a coastal landing, but she did so successfully. The Freedom capsule separated from the upper stage booster a few minutes later and thus began the crew's coast to the ISS. During the trip, they introduced the zero-g indicator for this mission. Welcoming three new astronauts to space, plus Gigi's here with us in her little Axiom spacesuit. The crew, with their supplies, rendezvoused, docked, and boarded the ISS the following day. Tonight, SpaceX is expected to make another attempt at launching their mission for Arabsat. Wednesday's previous attempt was scrubbed due to weather. And finally, SpaceX tweeted a short clip of Starlink in motion on Twitter and followed up that a school district in Arizona is among the first to use the service on their bus fleet so students can play mobile games instead of doing their homework as they commute home. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. After nearly two years of not going to space, Virgin Galactic fired six employees from underneath VSS's Unity's mothership on Thursday morning. This was the company's final test flight of their suborbital joy rides before providing trips to paying customers for almost half a million bucks per ticket. The Unity spacecraft reached an apogee of 54.2 miles, but those virgins didn't stream the event because nobody cares what you nerds want. Nerds! <laughs> Well, that's all for today, but it was good seeing you. Shout out to those of you kindly supporting the show using one of the various avenues available below. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.